Hebrews 11, Moses overcame. How did, how did he do it? Because however he did overcome serves as an example for other believers. Moses, victorious, overcame the world and the sinful flesh and even the devil. How did he do it? Well, Hebrews 11 and verse 24, by faith, by faith, how did he do it? Um, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, the age at which he could make decisions for himself, the age of personal responsibility, refused. So number one, by faith. Number two, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. She raised him, had a lot of help to raise him, but Number three, choosing. He overcame um, because of the choices he made. What did he choose? Rather to suffer affliction with, with who class? Yeah, people of God. So if he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God, that must mean he chose to leave what other people? The, um, he chose his company very carefully, very deliberately. Could have, could have stayed right there in the world and, uh, you know, but he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for how long? Yeah. And, there, and there is pleasure in sin for a season. But the verse goes on to say, then the judgment. You live in the pleasure of sin, that is sin against God. Pleasure meaning uh, the living for the gratification of your five physical senses, your taste, your touch. Help me out. You know the five senses. I got two of them. There it is. Uh, so... What we're learning from God's word is there are two categories of people. One lives for the pleasure of their sinful physical appetites. That's what they live for. By the way, um, our theme verse but that's not what Moses was living for, you know. And whenever Christians uh, begin to live for the pleasure of their sinful physical appetites, gratifying those, uh, there, there's trouble ahead. You mark it down. Yeah, there's trouble ahead. Uh, but listen. I, get, I think Moses understood this great declaration, which is our theme verse for this year, which I'm, I'm uh, committing to memorize. It's uh, Revelation 4.11. You know, somebody says, well, what, is, what else is there to live for? <laughs> what else is there to live for? I mean, right? Uh, please yourself. Uh, 
Uh, well, something else to live for. And Revelation 4.11 tells us, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. And why did God create all things? And for thy pleasure they are and were created. That's our theme verse. For this year, I hope you'll memorize that. Uh, so rather, you know, than dedicating myself to please myself. Uh, and like Moses, he chose to live for God's pleasure. See? So we're confronted then by the question, whose pleasure am I living for? Who am I living to please every day? You know? um, and you know, so we're looking at how Moses uh, lived a victorious and overcoming Christian life. Uh, or, Life as a child of God, a believer. See? All right. So we're back at Hebrews chapter 11. So um, it's not just any one thing. There's a number of important uh, examples set by Moses by faith. Um, for we live by faith, not by sight. Um, you know, trusting, trusting the Lord. By faith, Moses, when he was uh, come of years, you know, that age of accountability, personal responsibility, before God, I don't know, others call it adulthood, but I'm just going to go by the Bible. Um, secondly, refused, refused uh, to be called the son of, of Pharaoh's daughter. So why would Moses refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter? Let's talk about that for a minute. Well, um, if he wasn't the son of Pharaoh's daughter, then whose son was he? Let's bring it, say again. Yeah, he's the son of God, child of God. He's a child of God. Wow. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, verse 25, choosing. So Moses lived an overcoming Christian belief, life as a believer, child of God. And he, you know, every day we make cho choices, don't we? What kind of choices do we make every day? You know what, if you're driving down the street here in Las Vegas, you'll be making some choices. Like, like what kind of choices? You're just driving down the street. What kind of choices are you going to be making? How about, yeah, you'll be making choices about where you're going, uh, choices about where you won't go. But you'll also be making choices about what you'll let your eyes look at and what you'll choose to turn your eyes away from. Did you ever have a little voice in your mind that said, don't look, turn your eyes away? You'll be making choices. Uh, choices on Sunday might include what on Sunday? What might be a choice? Uh, meeting with Jesus Christ, who promised to be present at the assembly of the church. Do I go meet with Jesus, my God, my Savior? my Redeemer? 
Or do I just choose to lay in the bed? You know, um, I mean, see, how is it that Moses lived an overcoming life? Well, he made choices. And uh, one of the choices he made was rather to suffer affliction with people of God. Let me tell you, the world's ramping it up as it concerns hatred for the book, the Bible, as it concerns hatred for God's people. I don't know if you're aware of that, but I mean, the hate factor is really going up as biblical morality is being thrown away. Oh, it's going to get interesting. Um, you know, Egypt was, um, well, you can see in verse 25 what Egypt was dedicated to, what Egypt was all about, uh, then to enjoy the what class? There's Egypt. Egypt is typical of the world. Egypt is a portrait of the world. The pleasures of sin. Of course, our city is nicknamed Sin City because people travel the world to come here for the pleasures of sin. Wow. Then to enjoy the pleasures of sin. For a season. For a season. Because the pleasures of sin, there is pleasure in sin for a season. After that, the judgment. You've got to face God. See, Moses knew this. So uh, you can operate on the plane of the flesh. You can operate on the plane of the spirit. As you know, Christ is your personal savior. You're indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. There's two levels you can operate at. The flesh, pleasures of sin, or the spirit of God. Moses chose to be led, to be a spirit-led believer. And, uh, wow. Verse 26 goes on, esteeming, what do you assign importance to? What is important to? What is your life's priority? Well, the Bible tells us what Moses thought to be important, to be the um, most important part of his life, uh, esteeming the reproach of Christ. He thought Christ was more important than anybody else. And everything associated with the Lord Jesus Christ, Moses put it up here, above all others, above all else. This is, this is Moses, a fellow believer. Um, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. A lot of treasure in Egypt. You ever watch any of those documentaries about the uh, treasure that they're still unearthing? Uh, these, uh, what are they called that the uh, kings of the, the uh, pharaohs were, their bodies were encased in? What are those? Uh, we call them, is it, say that again? Sarcophagus? Sarcophagus? Any, anybody been to Egypt? Anybody? No? 
You have a sarcophagus. How do we say that again? Sarcophagus? All right. You have any. Is it from Egypt? <laughs> well, wow. All right. I don't know where to go with that. I'm not sure where to go with that. <laughs> I can't beat that. Amen. <laughs> well, how, what's the size of it? Good morning, Rose. Good morning. God bless you. How long? How, what? Six feet. Six feet. Wow. Um, Yeah, the treasure, treasures of Egypt, they're finding. I mean, look, Egypt has a lot of treasure. It, I mean, they would put gold over these sarcophaguses. No. Encase the sarcophagus in gold. Wow. How incredible is that, you know? The entire, we, you know, we say the coffin, but to just be overlaid with, you know, and I've, been, I've even heard of solid gold, finding solid gold, sarcophaguses, <laughs> solid gold, wow. Yeah, Egypt has a lot of treasure. Uh, but by faith, um, well, or rather, um, get back on the right verse here, uh, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward, of the reward. And what is the reward of faithfulness to Jesus Christ for the believer? What is the reward? What is the eternal reward? Anybody? Do you recall? I looked at it recently. The reward for the overcomer is to reign with Christ in his kingdom. I believe that was last Sunday we looked at that. So Moses was looking beyond immediate self-gratification he was living beyond the moment. He was living for eternity instead of the moment. See, and, and so that brings us to the question, you know, day and day, what is our thought process? What, what is our priority? What are our choices? And are we living in the self-gratification of the moment or are we living that is for self-pleasure which indeed sinful pleasure uh, or are we living for God's good pleasure I mean it, see there's a lot going on here with Moses that brings us then to what's going on with us this is how Moses lived a victorious life <clears throat> as a believer. Um, go to Second Peter, if you would, but we'll come back here, but Yeah, Second Peter, chapter three. So Moses chose moment by moment, day to day, to live a life 
that he knew was pleasing to God rather than to live for the uh, you know, treasures of Egypt. What did Moses know? What should we know? Are you there? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Seeing then that all these, what class? Is that next word? Which, by the way, while we're on the topic of things, 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 and more things, do you know what Jesus taught in the, in the uh, uh, account of the, of the sower and the reaper to be the reason, one of the primary reasons that choke out the word of God in the life of a person? What did Jesus tell us in that parable? Be one of the principal reasons for God that God's word is choked out of a person's life. The same word, things, things. You could say materialism, things. Seeing that all, all these things shall be, shall be what? What's going to happen to all the things, class? All the things, things, and more things. See that word dissolved? Um, well, you know what? Uh, we need to look at verse 10. How is God going to dissolve all the things, things, and more things? Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with the elements. Another word for things shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be what, class? It's what happens to the things, things, and more things. The, the lives of the world revolve around, what are you living for? I'm living for things, things, and more things. How to get more. Because, don't you know, he who dies with the most toys. Well, you know, you've heard all those sayings, right? He who dies with the most toys. Can you finish that? How's that how does that finish? He who dies with the most toys wins. Wait a minute. Surely that didn't come from God's word, did it? I'm getting another message from God's word. I mean... Somebody that vests their entire life in things, things, and more things, only then for all those things to burn up and melt, dissolve. Is that a winning strategy? I'm not sure about that. You know? And then to, uh, you know, then spend forever in the burning hell? Wow, I, I, that sounds like a lie to me. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> verse 12 looking for and hasting unto the coming day of God wherein the heavens <clears throat> being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat you know what I'm thinking the more I think about this the more it occurs to me I think Moses knew God's word I think Moses knew God I think Moses knew God's word and I think Moses was basing his life and the important choices of his life upon God's word. Not only do I think Moses knew God's word, I think Moses believed God's word. And it, it became the blueprint, the pattern for his life. You know, so many people are living for self, sinful, self-pleasure. So few people are concerned about God's pleasure. You know, it'd be a good time to start thinking about God's pleasure instead of being consumed by 
sinful self pleasure. I mean, there's a lot going on in, in, the, in the heart of Moses here. <clears throat> so back to Hebrews then, and uh, we're in chapter 11 of Hebrews, I believe it is. Wow, I mean, so thus far, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 24, how is it that Moses lived an overcoming life? Well, number one, by faith. We've established that. He was a man who walked by faith, not by sight. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Um, he refused, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Um, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And uh, you shall be my sons and daughters, and I will be a father unto you. Um, <clears throat> so, what happened to Moses? Talk to me for just a moment. What very well, I, what most likely were the consequences that Moses faced when he informed his Pharaoh she wasn't a she was a, a princess daughter of Pharaoh what to be a princess when he informed his Egyptian princess mother that he would no longer that he was rejecting he was rejecting being called her son. How do you think that went over? She raised him from when he was a what? A baby. And when he, be, when he came of years, he said to his Pharaoh mother, you know, I'm, I'm rejecting this arrangement. Mm. Well, choosing, he made choices, verse 25. Now, look, uh, what about our faith? What about, what about our, um, what are we, what are we refusing? What are we accepting? What are we choosing? What are we choosing to do and what are we choosing not to do? You know, this is life. This, these are the ingredients of a victorious life as a child of God. If I'm going to live in victory, can I, can I just do anything and everything that my sinful flesh craves? Uh, can I, can I just, um, can I, uh, uh, you know, what's that lizard, what's that insect that climbs on a, on a, on a plant and, and uh, begins to look like the plant it climbs on? Is that, is that a chameleon? So, I mean, can I be a chameleon Christian? Can I, can I just, you know, blend in with anyone and everyone or you know, look like anyone and everyone, just so I can fit in? Or am I going to have to refuse certain relationships? I mean, it's Moses, what a great teacher for the child of God today. Um, choosing rather to suffer affliction That's a tough one. Because, see, if I just kind of chameleon in with the world, the flesh, and the devil, I'm not going to have to suffer because I'll get along with everybody, right? I'm going the same direction that everybody else is going because I'm just kind of, you know, morphing in. But if I refuse, 
if I refuse, um, what is it? I think they're calling it the new morality today. It's not biblical morality. It's and and um, what's it going to lead to? Suffering. Affliction is trouble. Adversity. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I'm going to have to have a priority. Esteeming what's important. What becomes uh, the priority of my life? Esteeming Christ and all that pertains to Jesus Christ as being the most important consideration of my life. Um, wow. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the, you see, what is that saying? Greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. What is God saying to me here? Um, it, is, it is of greater value, greater profit, greater worth for me to live true to God and suffer affliction for my my. My lifespan as a child of God, which, uh, what does the Bible tell us to be the usual span of life here upon earth? 70, and if by strength, 10 more, 80. And that generally, not always, but generally is the lifespan on planet earth. You know what Moses is thinking? Moses is thinking... I'll, I'll be true to Christ. And he understands that will result in suffering, affliction. Because in case you haven't heard, this world hates Jesus Christ. Interesting, isn't it, how you can, you can pick up a discussion at the workplace, talk about the weather. Everybody likes to talk about the weather. I go to work and talk about uh, the great fishing I enjoyed. There's a lot of things I can talk about, but do you know when the whole spirit of the conversation changes? Isn't it interesting when you bring up Jesus, your God, your Savior? Isn't that interesting? How that that affects the whole spirit of the conversation. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, what is Moses saying? Well, he's saying, here, here's, here's his mindset. I'd rather suffer for, you know, the, whatever, 20, 30, 40 years of my life as a believer rather suffer and then to spend eternity blessed I'd, I'd rather suffer for two three four five decades and be true to Christ than to you know fit in Because I refuse Christ, I reject Christ so I can be accepted by the world for 78 years, only then to die and wake up in hell. Smart man, don't you think? I'd rather spend forever in eternal bliss and be true to Christ on earth than to spend 70 or 80 years loved and accepted and well-received by the world and then only to die and wake up in hell. Smart man, don't you think? Very smart man, very wise man. Wow. Moses, the overcomer. Um, Verse 
Kings 27, how did he get out of the world system? How did he escape the world system? Yeah. Uh, faith sets the believer free. Faith sets the believer free to live the life that God has planned and willed for his child to live. Faith makes that possible. Yeah, not fear, but faith. Faith makes it possible to take those steps out of this system and then to live the life and the plan that God has for every child of his. Faith makes that possible. Fear keeps you trapped. Fear makes you a slave. Fear makes you a prisoner. So, uh, do you know the details? How did God reveal his will to Moses? Anybody recall? Any of those? The burning bush. The burning bush. It was there at the burning bush. Remember God told him to remove his, his uh, shoes because the, the ground you're standing on is holy ground. You know. And God revealed his plan, his will to Moses. Do you, do you know what made it possible for Moses then to proceed with God's plan for his life? Faith. You know, God is calling um, many, many of his children to uh, a plan that he has for their life. Are you aware that God is calling? But um, what did Jesus say as it concerns his labor force? Anybody remember what Jesus said as it concerns the laborers? What did Jesus tell us about the laborers? The laborers are few. Is that because God isn't calling Laborers? Is that why the laborers are few? Why are the laborers so few? Well, it's not because God isn't calling. It's, it's because when God calls, it necessitates what? A, a choice to do what? To, to answer God's call and God's plan for your life, requires the child of God to proceed by what, class? By faith. Um, now, you're in Hebrews. Go to Hebrews chapter 3. If you would, please. We'll maybe look a little bit in chapter 4, but... Um, Because uh, this all, it's the same. It all pertains to Moses. And that's what we're looking. Uh, so Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Uh, well, read verse 15. Uh, verse 15, while it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Now, we'll get to what that means. What does it mean to have a hard heart? Harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Who did they provoke? They provoked God. How did they provoke God? What is it that 
provokes God. Well, we'll look at that. How be it then not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, uh, verse 17, but with whom was God grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, and we'll look at the particular sin, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Verse 18, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his what class? That's a place of blessing. But to them that did what? What grievous sin did they commit against God? They believed not. And their unbelief made them prisoners of fear. So we see they could not enter in, enter into what? What could they not enter into? What was God's plan? What was God's design for their lives? What had God revealed to them? What had God declared to them? But because of their unbelief, they could not enter into it. The promised land. Remember, what did God promise they would find in the promised land? The promised land is a place that what? The promised land is a land that floweth with what? Milk and honey. That's God's way of saying, that's God's way of saying, I've got blessings untold for you that are willing to, like Moses, choose to trust me, believe me, have faith in me. And by the way, what condition do we find the unfaith, the unbelieving? What was their condition? Do you remember what they were doing? They made the choice, unlike Moses, to disbelieve God. And what were they doing in their tents the whole night through? Anybody recall? They were, they spent the whole night weeping, weeping in fear. <sighs> Verse 1 of chapter 4. Now here's God's admonition to his child. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his, into his what? Into his rest. And, and why, why is that that we can rest? Because when you choose faith, you're now dependent upon whom? For all of your life's needs. And so you can rest. It's, it's now God doing it. Wow. Um, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached. Jesus died. To pay for our sins, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again. Jesus rose victorious over death, over sin, and even rose victorious over hell. Jesus defeated death. The wages of sin is death, and Jesus defeated death. And when you believe in Jesus Christ, you do the same. And it's all through Christ. Wow. Verse 2. 
For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. Why does the word not profit some, and why does the word profit others? Well, the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with, with what? With faith. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Verse 3, <clears throat> for we which have believed, what do we get to enter into? We get to enter into rest. God's care, God's protection, God's provision. Moses chose faith. Oh, God's calling, make no mistake about it. God is calling. Why are so few responding to the call of God? It's the same reason cited here, because they're choosing unbelief. They're choosing unbelief. Well, I'll, I'll grant you it's not easy. Uh, it's not easy when God calls. God calls. You know, and the thing about it, 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 when God calls, he doesn't give you the whole picture. He gives you snapshots. This is what I want you to do now. You take that step. He unfolds. He reveals more. You take that step. He gives you a little more. You take that. <clears throat> it's all by faith, not by sight. We live by faith, not by sight. It's not easy to resign your, your job. It's not easy when you have a wife or a family that you know you're responsible to take care of as a husband, a father. It's not easy to resign a job and by faith proceed. But I'll tell you, my testimony is I answered God's call. Now, granted, not, not all are called to pastor. Not all are called to be missionary, foreign missionaries. You know, some are just called to be faithful men and women of God right where they are and to labor in the harvest fields where God has placed them. Yeah. But uh, my testimony is in uh, you know, all of these decades, I answered God's call in 1979 and so you do the math. God has been faithful. God has been faithful. My, my family never went without the food they needed. My family never went without the clothing that they needed. My family never went without the health care that they needed. Uh, God made it possible for me to pay the bills. But you know, God didn't show all of that to me up front. God didn't give all of that to me up front. God just said, I'm calling you. And for three years, I was afraid to answer his call. I was miserable. Miserable. And then I answered his call. And the rest is history. My testimony to you is, God is faithful. Now I can look back in the rearview mirror of life, decades later, and I can say, he's been faithful. And I don't have the corner on that. When God calls, whatever God's calling you to do, my encouragement to you is, do it. Do it by faith. All right. You know, Lord, uh, we're always concerned about lost souls. Uh, we pray you draw them to Christ for salvation. That's what you do. That's what only you can do. As the gospel is proclaimed, taught, preached, as we evangelize, as we go forth, 
Oh, Father, we pray you draw, draw the lost souls to Christ. And then I, the Lord, are you calling anyone here to a particular, a particular ministry? A particular, could be a ministry in the church. Could be, could be a call to preach the gospel. It could be called a pastor. It could be a call missions, missionary, evangelist. Are you calling anyone here? Are you, maybe the call is just, just to start being faithful. Maybe the call is to, the call is to be a faithful steward of your resources. The time you give people, the talents you give people, the, the treasure you give people. Maybe the call is just to be faithful with your resources. My prayer is, God, you'd, You'd encourage people to take that step of faith, trusting you, entering into your rest. Please continue with us now in the service just ahead. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.